Okay, folks, it is the Nutty Knife Guy. And I will be doing the Buck 120, as promised. First of all, uh, if I seem a little out of it, last night I got hit by some kind of stomach problem. I was up all night, so I didn't get much sleep. I almost didn't make this video because I'm feeling kind of crappy. But here I am. Uh, before I go into the knife review, uh, I want to thank all my new subscribers. Uh, in the last two weeks, I've gone from 100 subscribers to almost 200 subscribers. Largely due to Donnie B all day. I can't thank you enough, brother. Uh, so, there's that. Now, also, I want to uh, just a really quick kind of give people, the, my new subscribers, uh, an idea of how I do knives. How I do knife reviews. Primarily, I evaluate them, evaluate them as personal protection tools, weapons, in case of attack by lizard zombie man ninja, or lizard lizard man zombie ninjas. Yes, that's it. Lizard Man Zombie Ninjas. Although, the other does exist. Uh, now, I, uh, many years and many pounds ago, I was in law enforcement. I did a lot of time in uh, armed private security. Uh, many more pounds and many more years ago, uh, I was very into the martial arts. I, But I, the area I lived in, it was really hard to get any kind of real training. I did go to uh, some dojos, a little bit of Taekwondo. My base martial art was Ishinru Karate. Um, and there were other things. But in the area I lived in, most of the time I had to drive at least 20 miles. Well, my parents had to drive me back then, or my brothers. Uh, 20 miles to a, a dojo. And it usually didn't last very long because it was really hard for... Uh, the instructors to make a business out of teaching martial arts. Again, a very rural area. But, you know, I hear there, I got a smattering. Uh, at the time, there were no DVDs or, vid or YouTube or anything to watch videos on. So I tried from books and movies and I tried to learn. Recently, I've taken a couple of uh, online uh, courses in Filipino martial arts. Not the same as hands on instruction, but best I can do under the circumstances. But anyway, that's where I'm coming from when I'm uh, doing a review of a knife. Even if a knife is not made as a fighting knife, that's usually where I'm coming from. Now this has a lot to do with what I'm going to say about the 120. The Buck 120 because this thing is the quintessential hunting knife along with the Buck 119. These are basically the same knife, it's just the 120 is longer. Uh, the, 10, the Buck 102 and the Buck 112, I think, are this family of hunting knives. Uh, they've been in continuous production for over 75 years. That should tell you something. But they're really, really good at hunting, and in my opinion, not much good for anything else. Light camp knife, yes. Trail knife, maybe. But the biggest problem with them is in the handles. For hunting, they're great. Just a excuse me, I gotta reach something here. You have these wonderfully smooth grips with no texturing, so if you're cleaning a kill, you don't get deer guts or moose guts or blood all over it, and then get them down into texturing, like on this fighting knife, which is an Ontario SP6. Love this knife, uh, one of the best mass produced affordable fighting knife designs available. But it has these grooves and all this texturing. Blood gets down and get it, uh, get, gets down in them and it dries. Uh, you're looking at some scrubbing to get them out. Even if you wash it off real quick, chances are it's going to get in there and make things all gooey. This on the other hand, find a mud puddle, stream, wash it off with what's ever in your canteen and you're good to go. Uh, but a slick handle for personal protection, not a good idea. Uh, I'm going to be taking this out to the uh, war post and we'll wet it down. 
uh, and to see how it handles. I pretty much know how it's going to handle, but I haven't gone hunting in a long time. My brother hunts, but um, I had uh, a 119 that I used and uh, the 102 and a 102, I think, too. 102, I think, too. Uh, but um, they work uh, for that. Uh, and really, which one of these is, you know, which one of the family of knives that you use really depends on your personal preference. Uh, as a personal protection tool, especially if you're hunting something that fights back like wild boar, maybe your marksmanship is a little off, those things have been known to charge, and you're going to need something close in, and it's going to get, it's going to get wet. Uh, you know, blood and entrails and whatnot of, of hog or lizard man zombie ninjas so th that's a real problem if you're using it to protect yourself with now this particular knife uh, bothers me a little bit on the handle because it also tapers to the point and it kind of makes my last two fingers especially my pinky dangle uh, I have to grip harder with my with my pinky to get a good solid grip on the knife and it just makes it awkward. That's not so much of a problem with the 119 because the handle here is a little shorter and it doesn't taper that way. Now that might not be a problem for somebody with smaller hands, but I probably have larger than average hands. I'm not going to say I have huge hands, but uh, yeah, this dangly finger thing is not a winner with me. But that could be just a personal preference. Uh, of course, uh, and also, I'm. Uh, I, it's a buck knife. It's I'm not really expecting too much in the way of a quality issue. Although, I'm going to be for a fighting knife. Excuse me for a hunting knife. What I'm going to be doing out there might count as abuse. Slamming it into a piece of pressure treated wood, and cutting what's fairly thick hard plastic. It's not what it's meant for. Uh, but if uh, you're out in a field, you know, you're out hunting and it's the only knife you got, things don't go your way, you get lost, you get caught in weather, whatever, uh, you know, you might wind up batoning with it or something like that. Again, I told you many, many times I don't baton. I don't really have the, anything to baton. I don't have, just, just don't have the materials. And other people do it, but if you might have to do it, you process wood, or even if you're hunting and you're processing meat and you chop through bone, uh, so, it uh, should, in my opinion, be, it, it's not going to do that well, but hopefully it'll be able to do that. It should be able to do that. Uh, the sheath, it's a buck sheath. All bucks, in my, uh, all of this line, not all bucks, I've seen bucks with some pretty cap, but other, uh, other than they're lined with not so great sheaths. But the 119 to 120 and 102 comes with the really nice leather sleeve, uh, sheaths. Uh, very good retention if you when you use the snap comes out very easy the the strap covers almost the entire knife very well constructed real leather um, I would like again I, I like different kinds of attaching points I would like to be able to wear, uh, wear it horizontally on the belt uh, it, at least they could put out uh, Buck could put out aftermarket sheaths that are molly compatible uh, but it's not a big deal uh, the loop, in my opinion, is just a little bit small and rigid, but um, it'll work. It'd work for almost any size belt, and that's just a, a personal preference. So we're gonna go out the war post, and we'll see what happens. Okay, guys, slightly different camera angle. This side of the war post is. Not as quite as chopped up, so it might give you a better indication of what the knife is doing. And I'm hoping to beat the rain before this starts. So we'll go right into it. The Buck 120 versus the Warpost. Okay, first of all, the water bottle. Last two knives didn't have so much luck with this. Let's see what happens. Okay, not only that was a pretty deep cut, 
that was a nice clean cut. So out of the box sharp, no problem, it's a buck. I would have not expected anything else. Okay, you can see that, that's a nice cut. Got some water in my eye. Okay, and something I keep forget to doing, the twist, the stab and rip. Yeah, there's not much water in that, eh? The bottle moved. Hopefully I can do this without cutting myself now. Okay. Let's try that one more time on this side. Okay, yeah. Nice clean rip. So, out of the box sharp, not a problem. Now, believe it or not, I did not get any water on this handle, so I'm going to drip a little on there to see if I'm right about it being slick. And do the warp post from there, and hopefully it doesn't fly out of my hand and cause mayhem. Pardon my rude neighbor, you can't go to the door to pick someone up. <laughs> yeah, this is, the wet handle is a real problem, so I'm gonna go up here with the thumb just so I can keep control. And, okay, <clears throat> had to dump some memory, because I had forgotten to do that. Not one of my better days when it comes to organization, but we'll finish this up real fast before it quits again. Okay, I did the whole eight angles, I think. We'll do the hard wax. And the handle has dried off, so, which is a good thing, because I think it would have flown out of my handle on that one. Okay, no edge damage, no edge roll. Well, I take it back. I don't know if, uh, see this, but I got quite a bit of flecking here. That's going to have to be taken care of. Let's try to thrust. But again, this is not meant for what I'm doing. Okay, good solid bite on the thrusting though, that would be good for piercing hides. Eh, didn't quite get a good angle on that one, and this time it's moving away. Let's try that. Yeah, uh, because of that curving point, you have to kind of go like this, but if you do that, you get good bite into this wood. But here you go, you do have some edge roll. It probably wouldn't do the function of the knife, but that does kind of surprise me. But this is a hunting knife, which means the edge is going to be relatively thin, and I am trying to chop wood with a hunting knife. I'm going to go downstairs and wrap things up. Okay, so we've been out to the war post. And we've got some edge damage here. Uh, my light is failing. I was counting on window light, and then it got kind of stormy dark out here. And I don't want to blind you guys with the flashlight. But I'm going to see if you can see. I don't know for sure that you can see the edge damage. But we do have a bit of edge roll. Not, fan, not a whole lot of it. And I don't think it happened until I really whacked into that wood. Now again, I am sure that if I turned this in for the warranty, Buck said you did. We're just going to say you did what? Who told you to do that? But, uh, again, even if you're chopping through bone, live bone is softer than hard bone, than dead bone, but still, uh, you know, if I had kept going, I think we would have had real damage here, and that's why I didn't feather stack or try to carve, because I think it could have made the damage worse. Now, having said that, it's a hunting knife, so it's going to have a really thin edge for skinning and it wasn't meant to do that but budget knives that cost a lot less than this thing have done that test and have come through that test on the war post with no edge damage we're talking mtech we're talking cisco uh, so 
I'm going to hold this up again. I don't, again, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. I think you can. Uh, but yeah, that's a problem. And when I did get it with the handle wet, it did fly around in my hand. And uh, I had that little hiccup because I had forgotten to dump the memory on the camera. And while I was doing that, it dried. And I honestly think that when I was whacking it, I might have lost control of the knife because it, when I was doing the eight angles of attack, this thing was flying around in my hand. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to just going to say it. With that edge roll, I'm kind of disappointed in this. Uh, now, I have never done that testing with the 120. I mean, excuse me, my 119. Well, actually, this is my brother's 119. Um, uh, I think I gave my 119 away to somebody who actually hunts. I've never tested 119, and I'm not going to go out there and do it with my brothers. But this was not an inexpensive knife. I got a good deal on it. I only paid 60 bucks for this at a local uh, outdoor shop. And when I saw it for 60 bucks, I'm thinking, wow, cool. But and because I think they're going for over 90 online. But I'm not now this is going to be something that I can buff out of there with sand more, you know, fix with sandpaper. Maybe even just a couple of turns on the whetstone, but still. Uh, I expected more from the the buck. And but I keep having to go back to this. This is a hunting knife. Certainly not designed to be slammed into pressure treated wood and cutting the what are really actually thick, pretty hard water bottles. And you can see on the water bottle test, zipping right through. So I'm not even going to do a recommendation on this thing. Uh, take this video, do some research if you're considering having one of this, one of these. Make up your own mind. Uh, if you already have one. This will give you an idea of its capabilities. Now, well, as with anything, this could be uh, something that is unique to the model, this this uh, test failure, this edge rolling time. Uh, another one, another buck 120 might not have had a problem. Uh, but, and the damage is slight, and it's right here. Right there where my thumb is pointing. You can, yeah, I think you can see it glinting a little bit. Uh, had I continued, I think that it would have gotten worse. And it, you could have found yourself out in the field with a knife that was less effective, that did not work as well. And if it was your only one, that could be a problem. Especially if you didn't have a stone or a diamond to uh, buff that out of there. I think the first thing I'm going to do is just try a strop. Just use a strop to fix this. Uh, I will say this. As a personal protection tool, this ain't it. Uh, the handle's not right. Uh, the taper, is, it bugs me. And if you're bouncing it, if you're trying to slice through, if you bounce this off bone and, it, and the edge did roll like this, or maybe you caught a big button or anything hard, and, it, and then you're trying to slice through cloth, uh, that is enough of a burr on that blade, on that edge, for it to catch. Uh, so, I am very surprised that this failed the war post. I'm not going to sit there and tell you that it's not a good knife. As I said, what I'm doing with it is not what it's for. But honestly, even for a hunting knife, because let's face it, most hunting knives become camp knives. They become trail knives. They could become survival knives. And that said, this should not have happened. Again, I'm sure when they made it, they didn't decide, uh, they didn't count on some bonehead uh, smacking it up against a piece of pressure treated wood and, and slicing through water bottles with it. But again, this could be bone, uh, this could be wood that you're processing, doing that kind of damage. Uh, very surprised that I expected more from the, uh, this company. I have wanted one of these for a long time and I still like it. 
but um, even for hunting, I'm not sure after this that I wouldn't take one of my MTEX or Scuso over this. Like I said, those budget brands passed, those, passed the test. This failed. And it, that's what it is, folks. It's a failure. I don't know what else to say about it. So, having said that, I'm sorry, Buck people. Like I said, this could be an anomaly. This might be the exception to the rule. Uh, but this is a fail. Uh, that kind of edge roll has to be called a failure. Having said that, if you like what I'm doing, like 194 other people the last time I looked, like, share, and subscribe. Leave some comments. Have anybody else had a problem with a uh, uh, problem with this knife like that? Has anybody else tried to test it this way? Um, but yeah, you like, share, and subscribe. That really uh, makes it uh, makes my day. I don't reply to all the comments, uh, but if one catches my eye, I certainly do reply to some of them. And uh, just another thing that I'm going to do, my next giveaway will probably be at 400 subscribers. It will be some kind of a knife that will be determined. But I'm also going to add some shameless self-promotion here. I am also a published author. I had six book novels published with one publisher. We had a falling out. I got my rights back to those my novels. And I found a new publisher, World Castle Publishing. And uh, that, my novel, The Fate of Nations Fireteam Alpha Book 1, is in final editing. I'm looking for a release date sometime in July. But my next giveaway, uh, I'm not exactly sure whether it's going to be a 300 or 400. It kind of depends on uh, how fast things go. So I can budget in a good knife to buy to give away. But whatever knife, whatever knife comes in, uh, you will also get a signed copy of said novel. As I said, we're going with World, Ca I'm, World Castle Publishing has it. It's in final editing. It's got to go through uh, router proofreading. It's got to have the cover up, uh, cover on it. Uh, you can go to World Castle Publishing. Uh, and uh, my name is listed as one of their authors, and it, it, my, the book is listed in their, on their website uh, as release date pending. But, uh, and I, I'll go ahead and just put a link in there in case anybody is curious. But the next giveaway, whenever it is, will we include a knife and a side copy of the book. Who knows, maybe you have a, like a couch or something that has a bad leg on it, you can use the book to uh, prop it up. Or, you know, after it's published and you know, I walk out and get hit by a truck. Maybe worth something. With that, I leave you with my usual admonishment. Two, draw your knives only in just purpose. Sheathe them only with honor. And to remember that without knives, life would be dull and pointless. And again, please like, share, and subscribe. I bid you good day.